This video is brought to you by Squarespace. When it comes to websites, online stores, etc., there's no place to build a beautiful online presence like Squarespace. The Whale has been one of the most talked about movies of the year, and most people haven't even seen the damn thing. Literally all there is to go off of is this one standing ovation clip and this one still of Brendan Fraser. I'm so sick of looking at this photo, can we get another photo from the movie? Even the poster! All they did was airbrush him, like, what? what is going on? Like Darren Aronofsky's last film, Mother, The Whale has been met with a lot of controversy, and as someone who's seen it, I want to talk about it. What do I think? Is it worth seeing? Let's get into it. The Whale is about an English teacher named Charlie suffering from severe obesity. With only a few days left to live, he uses that time to try and reconnect with his daughter, played by Sadie Singh. The entire film takes place in his apartment, we only leave it to go to the porch like one or two times. And yeah, let's just say it's not a pleasant movie going experience. Now I'll get the main point out of the way right off the bat, yes, Brendan Fraser is amazing in this movie. It is hands down the best performance of his, and easily one of the best performances of the year. It does have the same energy as like Joaquin Phoenix's Joker where once you see the performance you're kind of like yeah he's probably gonna win the Oscar. It also kind of carries the film in the same way. It makes sense that this film sat in development hell for as long as it did due to casting because the wrong performance and the wrong actor could have ruined the entire movie. It really is one of those characters that either needs to be the best performance possible or can't be made at all. Anything in the middle just wouldn't work which does say something about the film itself but we'll get there in a second. Brendan Fraser does so much with his eyes in this movie it never feels like he's necessarily trying to make you cry or overdoing it, he's just coming at the performance from a very grounded perspective, and through that you feel way more empathetic than you would if he really hammed it up. That said, I honestly am pushing for him to win Best Actor, because he is definitely an actor that deserves it, and it is a performance that the movie would be nothing without. It's so easy to call it overhyped at this point, but it's not. It's it's a really great performance. Sadie Sink also delivers a razor-sharp performance that feels so mean. She really does come across like a young teen who is posting the worst thing you've ever seen on Facebook in 2013. It does feel a bit exaggerated, which is less on her and more on the script, but damn does she prove herself to be easily the best actor on Stranger Things. Then there's Hong Chao, who has arguably just as tough of a role as Fraser. Her character has to simultaneously feel frustrated and fed up, but also empathetic with Charlie, a balance that Chao fully pulls off here. It's a very patient performance, and she's really the only character in the film that feels 100% real and human, and I really do think Hong Chao should be getting more praise for what she does with the role. Truly, every Every performance here is great, which is not surprising given how much rehearsal time the actors were given for the film, and that it's the kind of script that gives actors the freedom to really go for it. If this film accomplishes anything, it's showing how great these actors are and I wish it did more than that. I like Aronofsky a lot as a filmmaker, right? He hasn't really missed with me personally, but I also haven't seen everything he's made. The thing about his work though, is that regardless of how I come out of his movies feeling as a whole, the form is always so strong that it makes me feel awful inside. His movies always make me feel empty, not in a dissatisfied way, but in a way that's like, you just took everything that made me feel good and cozy and ripped it out of me with that movie. You made me feel horrible. And The Whale is the first film of his that made me feel empty in the bad way. The Whale has an ending that I won't spoil, but that definitely left me feeling unsettled and a little shaky, that certified Aronofsky feeling. But it honestly felt like it cheated me a bit, because 98% of the movie is not that. Most of this movie is not shaky or unsettling. It's depressing and it's rough to watch, but it doesn't feel like it gets into your bones like that. Mostly because it is dealing with a very sensitive kind of character that should be treated through patience and through an empathetic lens. It doesn't feel like it necessarily builds up to the ending, although the ending is kind of looming over you the entire movie. I guess all I'm trying to say is that just because the ending is amazing does not make the rest of the movie anything special. It doesn't justify how dull most of this film feels. Any feeling I got from this movie, I got entirely from the actors, specifically Brendan Fraser. I feel like I'm in the minority of a lot of critics in that I don't think the movie is shot in a way that keeps this setting particularly engaging, or in a way that pulls you into Charlie's mind. It definitely looks nice, the lighting and production design really drive home this isolating end of the road feeling you're supposed to have, and there are subtle choices here and there that do pull you into Charlie's psyche, like when we only see the pizza man when Charlie sees him, or with the way they shot his computer screen, but for the most part, I felt uh, pretty underwhelmed with the direction of this film. Aronofsky kind of got away with being uninteresting by letting Fraser take control of the film, which thank God he did. And I mean that in more ways than just the cinematography. I thought the movie just didn't go deep enough with this character, and it's the kind of character that needed to go a hell of a lot deeper. I can see this movie working for a lot of people. Parts of it did work for me simply because of Fraser, but to me at least, the film felt mostly surface level with how it went about Charlie's eating disorder. I'm not saying this is the case for everybody 
anybody who liked the film. But if you go into this with disgust toward those who suffered from what Charlie is suffering from, the movie is basically going to spend the entire runtime explaining why you should actually feel empathy for them. And by the end, I'm sure you would feel empathetic. And for that, I think the movie is doing some good. But personally, I already went into this movie sort of empathizing with Charlie. The movie assumes you already don't like him. It starts with this humiliating act of him masturbating himself to death. That's where we start. And it's meant to put him in this place of like, oh, look at how disgusting this is. But I don't know. Personally, I was like, I would rather just like to get to know the guy. All I'm saying is if the film actually wanted to dive deep into the subject matter, I feel like it would start where it ends. Looking at Charlie through an empathetic lens from the get-go, not spending the entire film trying to get you to empathize with Charlie. We get the backstory, we learn who the people are around him, we see them change, but for some reason it doesn't feel like a whole lot is actually accomplished through this film. We're just watching a man reflect and process his life and his regrets, which I'm sure was cathartic to the original playwright who based this off his own experience, but I don't think it translates all that well to the screen, where the film seems to come at it less from this personal introspective lens and more from a disturbing one, for lack of a better term. And that's why I like to circle this back to how amazing Fraser and Chow's performances are in this, because their faces more than their words bring this necessary heart and growth required to make this thing at all compelling. Once again, maybe as a play or maybe as just a piece of writing, this story could really work, but I don't think the way Aronofsky went about it really got across to me. At the end of the day, the film is going in with the best intentions. I'm not an expert in the subject matter, so I'm not going to act like I have anything of substance to say about fat phobia. But that said, I don't think the people behind this went into it trying to do any harm. And I also think as a movie about processing grief, I think it tackles that subject relatively comprehensively, and I'm sure it will hit very close to home for a lot of people, which is something to admire. But I guess to wrap things up, when I saw this at TIFF, I came out lukewarm, and to be honest, the more I've sat with it, the less it stuck with me. And that's because in failing to go deep enough with a character with a lot of depth, the film ends up coming out a little watered down, and it feels like the general message is mistaken for, look at this fat guy, don't you feel bad for him? But I'm thrilled for Brendan Fraser, I think he was amazing in this film, he saved the film, and I can't wait to see him hopefully win Best Actor. And that's what I gotta say, thanks for watching, go watch The Whale and form your own opinion, and before you head out, I would like to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, Squarespace, if you didn't already know, is a place to go to build your brand, whether it be an online store, or a blog, a portfolio, you name it. They're the best place to go to build a website if you've been looking to do that. They have professional portfolio designs where you can create galleries for your work as well as password protected pages if you got any clients. I personally love their video block feature which allows me to showcase my work in a way that looks really nice. Plus, they have a built-in mobile web designer which makes it so that any website you make, it's going to look great no matter what platform it's on while still matching that unique style of yours. The best part about it all though is that if you go to squarespace.com slash Karsten, you can get 10 percent off of your first purchase so guys really no reason not to give it a chance do you have a website i know you don't have a website yet use squarespace to build it thanks for watching thanks squarespace for sponsoring this video and i'll see you in the next one